Hey everyone, in this video I get to work on this awesome maple slab, but I do not get through it without a couple hiccups along the way. Thanks for watching. I got this awesome maple cookie from a company off of Etsy out of Pennsylvania. I was looking for something different. I hadn't done a circular piece yet, and I noticed this was an awesome company, had really good reviews, and it had uh, quite a bit of spalting on this piece. So that was something that I definitely wanted to kind of try out and uh, see how I liked it. This piece was uh, almost two and a half inches. I cleaned it up with the Dremel, uh, and then it was ready to start the pour. I made the mold here out of uh, a melamine, and I definitely prefer that with uh, epoxy pours. I, I hit this, I didn't show it, but I hit it before with some mold release so that it pops out really nice. A little bit of a home job there. Um, I had to add a little, little bit. No leaks, as you'll see. I find you can make it look not too nice, but as long as you caulk it really well, it won't leak on you. So uh, just giving it some rough measurements here. I ended up wasting quite a bit of epoxy on this, obviously, because it's a circular piece and I poured it for a square. Um, I am not going to do that again. I've seen people make circular molds and I've actually made one since. Um, I don't know why I didn't on this one. I guess I was lazy. Didn't quite have the equipment to cut a, a good circle, which I kind of show later on in this video. But I'm using super clear liquid glass deep pour epoxy. They say you can pour this thing like single pour like up to four inches, four to six inches, which is pretty insane. The most I've done at a single time was actually probably this pour. I think I did uh, about two inches on this first pour. Definitely needing a bigger bucket here. I use like the last bit of all the epoxy I had laying around the house to kind of just clean house and start over. Some of those bottles have been sitting for a little bit using the, I always use the powder, um, black mix that way. I don't, I don't seal my slabs. I haven't had an issue with it. It, that this powder does not stain. It hasn't stained on any of my projects. So, um, I, I like the powder compared to the drops. One thing I really try to avoid is um, not mixing my epoxy enough. I probably over mix it, honestly. I'm at this bucket here for like 20 minutes, uh, just uh, using that drill bit and in the stir stick, and then let it let the uh, epoxy sit for a couple minutes, bring those bubbles to the top. Um, don't really know if that actually makes a difference because you produce bubbles when you pour it in there anyways, but it's kind of fun to let them rise and pop them. So I've got it clamped down here so the slab doesn't float. I haven't had an issue with that yet, but I'm sure uh, eventually I will. I ended up not having quite enough epoxy. If I would have just cut off those corners, I think it would have been good. Uh, I get about two inches here and then have to come back later and, and top it off. Popping the bubbles here, um, they claim that they'll all pop on, the, on their own, which uh, usually does. Yeah, so showing you that crack held up, that addition held up really well. No, no leaks at all. All right, so this is about two weeks later. Uh, I wanted to top this slab off a little bit more. I thought about just like calling it good and letting the, uh, the industrial sander where I take this piece to just shave it down uh, that half inch extra. And it'd still be a pretty thick piece. It'd probably be about two inches, but I kind of wanted it thicker than that so I took the time roughed up all the edges which was kind of a pain because there's a lot of little spots I tried to get so I was using uh, cut saw bits anything that my Dremel kit had and a sander to really rough up those edges here I was about to make the pour and then I was like well I haven't hit the sides with mold release in like a couple of weeks it's probably worn off so um, I uh, decided to take the time to put some Tyvek tape um, definitely don't use mold release here because it'll compromise that epoxy pour if that uh, mold release obviously would get on that that roughed up spot. So I'm using some Tyvek tape uh, on the edges here uh, to make sure that it, it'll pop off nicely when it's all cured. All right, I didn't show you guys the mixing process again because you've already seen it once, but topping it off here a little bit. And then I, uh, it kind of occurred to me like I should probably top off or I should probably seal the top because the bottom's been sealed for quite some time. And if the top absorbs oxygen and the bottom doesn't, it could create some issues. I really wasn't worried about this piece warping on me, but I decided might as well just seal that top, which would also help with any uh, soft spots. 
all right, uh, yet again, uh, a week or two later, um, I usually give, I, I mean, they, they say this is fully cured after 72 hours, but um, I usually don't break the mold for at least a week um, just for, just, just because I'm like that. I just don't want to have any uh, potential chance of it um, not being fully cured. So driving a wedge on that opposite side, breaking the seal around the edges, you know the drill. Yep, so got it out of there. Pretty cool looking. I always love looking at the bottom of it. Um, pretty cool spalting that um, definitely pops in the finished piece. All right, back out to my tiny garage. I'm actually going to be moving shops here soon. Um, nothing special. My parents uh, have this big side room that they're like they're not using. They're like, you should be in there. As AC heating, my garage obviously doesn't. I can't do any epoxy pours in there during the heat of the summer months or the, the cold of the winter. So they're going to let me move in there. I'd, I'll probably triple or quadruple the space I have, so that'll be super nice. But you can see here another home job uh, from TD Wood Customs. I'm using the... An arrow. If you don't know, I have a another side business called Identical Draw. It's actually quite a bit bigger than TD Wood Customs. Uh, we, it's me and my twin brother. We have a outdoor uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we kind of film our own show, but also do marketing for outdoor companies. So you can check that out. Using an arrow here, just to just to get a rough a rough edge. Um, this is about to go to uh, an industrial shop and get sanded. So I wasn't. It wasn't like my exact measurement uh, for the circle here. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get that with that arrow. There's, uh, it might look like a perfect circle here, but it's not. There's some indents in different spots. So uh, shaving it down piece by piece, and then I'm taking the jigsaw and going to cut the edges off. And this is really where you can see all that, all that wasted epoxy around the edges. I mean, that's easily a couple hundred dollars worth. Um, so I suck at woodworking, but... I'll get, I'll figure it out. Uh, I actually ended up using those corner pieces for like cool cheese block that I'm making right now. My wife saw, saw it and was like, you need to, you need to use that epoxy somehow. I was thinking about just dumping it in the trash, but I didn't feel good about that either. So, all right, fast forward. Uh, the, I took the piece to the shop. It's obviously very nicely sanded. I'm using a flush trim bit to get a perfect edge. Uh, what I also didn't show you is I made a homemade circular jig, which worked out perfect. I actually, since then, I've gotten a, a nice one from Rockler. Uh, I can li I'll link that and everything else below. But using a flush trim bit to get the final circle here. And I mean, I'm it's an awesome way to get a, a perfect circle. One thing I didn't realize with that flush trim bit is it's not very long. So I did have to go down quite a bit, like with a circular bit on that uh, circular jig. Uh, I had to go down at least an inch with this two and a half inch piece so that flush trim bit could actually, um, was actually uh, long enough to to work. So here the router got away from me um, or I didn't, I actually didn't have like my center perfect, my center uh, nail perfect. So it cut in a little bit and my remedy for this is I, it actually worked out decent. Um, this is my first try. I ended up switching out a little bit. But I basically found uh, a similar edge piece that I, had, that I had cut off with the jigsaw, and I thought it might be a really good match to fix that little piece. So I put some wood glue on there and um, let it sit. I end up just doing the wood piece like that and then just re-pouring the black epoxy. Instead of trying to glue black epoxy to black epoxy, I just re-poured, put some Tyvek tape there on the edge and re-poured that black epoxy. Um, it, looks, it looks pretty good. You can definitely tell there's something there. But um, it was a, I was pretty impressed with the fix. It, it worked out. So that was issue number one. Issue number two is I ran into one of the worst things as a woodworker, and that is bugs. I bought this, like I said, from a, a, a good company out of Pennsylvania. And I've, as I was like about to start the finishing sanding process, I was like clearing out the holes for a l last little epoxy pour in those little holes. Um, there's obviously, there's a previous sign of bugs in the, in the wood slab, which is very common. There's usually, um, some holes from bugs and especially maple bugs love maple. So when I found, uh, I found two bugs and I right away immediately bagged up the piece, um, put it out of my garage, which was, which was freezing, which would also hopefully kill them. 
Before that, I also hit it really quick with mineral spirits. I, I, I soaked in mineral spirits. I read in, on some forums that sometimes that can at least slow them down. So I was like, whatever, I'm going to do that really quick, bag it up, put it in my freezing garage, and then get a hold of these people. And they, I got a hold of them right away. They were super good. Um, they worked with me really well. So I'm super careful about making sure I purchase pieces that are kiln dried or heat treated for bugs. Um, it's nothing to mess around with. Uh, if like bugs will crawl out of your piece um, if you don't get um, treated wood. So I called them right away and they were like, wow, this is like all of our wood, wood is heat treated. Like we've, we've been doing this for like 30 years and never had anybody with an issue with bugs. So they fully refunded me the piece and then also walked me through how to treat the piece. Ended up using Bora Care and it worked out really well. Here you can see me, um, since I have it out, I'm like, I might as well also treat this piece, which is also supposed to be treated, but I'm like, heck, I'm just going to treat both of them while I have it and hopefully took care of the issue of bugs. I mean, how, how am I supposed to know? I treated both sides like, like they told me to. I read a lot of instructions, so hopefully that got rid of the bugs. There are a lot of reasons those bugs should be dead. So, all right, fast forward a couple weeks. Um, this slab soaked uh, in the Boracare and all that, all that good stuff. I'm feeling confident that this thing is ready for the next stage. So I am inlaying the legs just a little bit, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, using those wood pieces there to guide my um, router. Um, I have little spacers there that worked out really nice. Just measured to make sure that they were in the correct locations and then was super easy to just route out that little space. Now here I'm just uh, heating up those little epoxy spots and then scraping them off um, with that handy scraper. I use that all the time getting those last little pieces um, filled with epoxy. So this thing is just about ready for the final sanding process. I don't think I showed it, but I also um, added just a, a small 45 degree chamfer on the bottom and then a quarter inch round over on the top, uh, which gave this a really sleek look. You can see that round over there. Definitely just gives it a cool look. Hitting it here, um, so far before this, I, I didn't quite show. I use my Dewalt sander, and I always do that right away when I get the piece from the industrial sander because they have those zigzag marks on there from their sander. So I, I sand it with the Dewalt uh, up to 80 and then 120, then I hit change over to my finished sander with the Festool, and I um, hit it with 180 and 220. I, I'll, I'll spray it with water at least once or twice during that process that they claim raises the grain. The most important thing when um, sanding epoxy and wood is to have an air compressor and just always hit that piece that you're sanding and hit the sander as many times as possible. That really helps cut down on the on the pigtail swirls and stuff and it speeds up the process quite a bit. So I try to sand just the epoxy, um, spray it down and just sand the wood. Um, and I'm changing pads pretty quick. Um, I'm using the 3M extract, I'll have that linked below. All right, so I marked the legs. Um, with a little drill bit and then I'm gonna put these uh, threaded inserts in super handy easy to use Just drill it out, have that little marker on the drill bit so you don't go too far, too deep. Not rocket science here, you've seen it before. Hit it quick with the air compressor and then I'll come back. And this is this is a step that I thought was super overrated. Like this is, this is dumb. I'm not going to use a countersink, but ever since I started using it, it's been super handy. Like it just gives it such a cleaner look and helps that um, threaded insert to sit in there. Perfect. Otherwise, sometimes it can sit a little high, which can make your, your legs uneven. So definitely I, it's definitely my recommendation from a guy that used to doubt the countersink, definitely use the countersink. It's, it's been a little bit of a game changer when it comes to leg insulation. Hitting the threaded insert with a little CA glue, you don't have to. It, they'll stay in. That CA glue just kind of bonds that, that threaded insert to the wood or the epoxy. Um, cures really quick. So 
not necessary, but just an extra step I take. Love these legs. I've purchased it uh, from this guy before. They actually ship all the way from Latvia, and they're affordable. I can't find anybody from the United States that makes a cool, like modern leg like this um, for the for the cheaper price. So if you are uh, in the United States and you make legs like that, uh, hit me up. I'm looking for a guy that can kind of be my uh, one stop shop for that uh, for legs. So let me know. Here I'm using the the old go to uh, Rubio Monocoat. Um, three to one ratio with the accelerator. I I always pour more down than I than I need. Uh, I just I really like to let that wood soak it in. It's a hard wax finish. I th I see some guys just use like the bare minimum and they're just scraping by, and that that probably gets the job done. But I think why not give the wood as much finish as it needs and really let it soak in. So I use the trowel to uh, move it around and then use a, a, a lint-free cloth and just make sure everything, make sure that Rubio Monaco is spread everywhere. And then you just start wiping. I, I let it I let it react with the wood for at least five minutes. Don't touch it. And then come back and start, start the removal process. The number one thing, of course, is to make sure it's all gone. So I don't know how many uh, lint-free cloths I used. I just kept rubbing it, rubbing it um, until there was absolutely no yellow that came off on the cloth. Then for the top, um, same process. Again, excess Rubio. I just really like to let let it soak in uh, as much as as much as the wood will take. The nice thing about Rubio Monaco is it looks so good on wood and amazing on epoxy too. Definitely recommend that finish. I was using the, the Rubio Monaco 2C Plus Pure. Wiping off the last little finish that's left on top, and then we have a finished piece. It looks it looks incredible. The spalting's amazing. I couldn't be more happy uh, with how this piece turned out. With all the issues I had with the bugs and then the, the router issue, I was super happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hopefully this helps answer some questions. I'm hoping a lot of people come to my YouTube channel to, to see the issues I have and then how I how I fix them. So super happy with this project. If you want to look at it online, it's on my website and my Etsy page. Uh, tdwoodcustoms.com is the website. So uh, if you're interested in custom work, you can reach out to me there. Thanks for watching another video. We'll see you next time.